Our main celebrant will be the most Reverend David M. O'Connell, CM, the Bishop of Trenton. This year's theme is Men on a Mission. Nine young Vincentians go to China in 1921. Next Monday, October 26, our preacher will be Father John Foyne. If you would like us to thank Mary with you for a favor you have received, please write it on the back of the a petition slip and place it in the box right next to Our Lady of Alencani statue, which is located in the Lower Shrine, right outside the gift shop. All petitions are placed before Mary's altar. Let us now thank Mary for the following favors received through her intercession. My daughter was born, born, my daughter was born with extensive venous malformation. Through prayers to the Blessed Mother, they have found the gene, and hopefully it will bring new treatment and with more prayers, a cure. Thank you, Mary. Thank you for Dad's cancer-free, permanent, clean bill of health. My son and daughter received the final of the financial blessings to, in, to attend school and receive their degrees. Thank you, Mother Mary. Now with confidence in Mary, Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal, and her powerful intercession to pray for our intentions, let us kneel or sit and pray together our Novena prayers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful, by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us in the same Spirit to be truly wise, never to rejoice in his consolation, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Mary, conceived without sin. Pray for us. O Mary, conceived without sin. Pray for us. O Mary, conceived without sin. Pray for us. O Lord Jesus Christ, who have vouchsafed to glorify by the number of miracles, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Immaculate from the first moment of her conception, grant that all who devoutly implore her protection on earth may eternally enjoy your presence in heaven, who with the Father and Holy Spirit live and reign God forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, who for the accomplishments of your greatest works have chosen the weak things of the world that no flesh may glory in your sight, and who for a better and more widely diffused belief in the immaculate conception of your mother, have wished that the miraculous medal be manifested to St. Catherine Laverite, grant we beseech you, that filled with like humility, we may glorify this mystery by word and work, amen. The Memorare. Remember, O oh, most compassionate Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your assistance, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O oh, Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we kneel, sinful and sorrowful. O oh, Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your clemency, hear and answer them. Amen. Our Novena Prayer. O Immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord Jesus and our Mother, penetrated with the most lively confidence in your all-powerful and never-failing intercession, manifested so often through the miraculous metal, we, your loving and trustful children, implore you to obtain for us 
the graces of favorites we ask from this novena, if they be beneficial to our own souls and the souls for whom we pray. You know, O oh Mary, how often our souls have been the sanctuaries of your Son, who hates iniquity. Obtain for us then a deep hatred of sin and that purity of heart which will attach us to God alone, so that every thought, word, and deed may tend to his greater glory. Obtain for us also a spirit of prayer and self-denial that we may recover by penance what we have lost by sin, and at length attain to that blessed abode where you are the queen of angels and of men. Amen. An act of consecration to Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. O Virgin Mother of God, Mary Immaculate, we dedicate and consecrate ourselves to you under the title of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. May this medal be for each one of us a sure sign of your affection for us and a constant reminder of our duties towards you ever while wearing it. May we be blessed by your loving protection and preserved in the grace of your Son, O most powerful Virgin, Mother of our Savior. Keep us close to you every moment of our lives. Obtain for us your children the grace of a happy death so that in union with you, we may enjoy the bliss of heaven forever. Amen. O Mary, conceive without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to you. O Mary, conceive without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to you. O Mary, conceive without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to you. This afternoon is being offered for Elizabeth Bernadette O'Sullivan Hill, deceased. And we do begin our Mass as we always do in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters in Christ. As we celebrate this Eucharist, let us try to feel the presence of Jesus and our Blessed Mother, and the wonderful inner peace that their presence brings us. Let us also pause for a moment to call to mind our sins and our sinfulness, and let us ask the Lord's forgiveness. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your, grant us your salvation. And now let us pray on this, the feast of St. John de Brebeuf, Isaac Jogue, 
and companions. O God, who chose to manifest the blessed hope of your eternal kingdom by the toil of Saints John de Brebeuf, Isaac Jog, and their companions, and by shedding of their blood, graciously grant that through their intercession, the faith of Christians may be strengthened day by day. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading today is from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we hold this treasure in earthen vessels, that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not constrained, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. For we who live are constantly being given up to death for the sake of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since then, we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written. I believed, therefore I spoke. We too believe, and therefore speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in the abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial, those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. Those who sow Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. Those who sow in tears, tears shall be rejoicing. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the turns in the southern desert. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Those who sow in tears Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. Those who sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Lord be with you. 
with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, whoever loves me will keep my word and my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit that the Father will send in my name, he will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives you, do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Almighty God, bless my heart and my lips, and I'm ready to proclaim your good news in the name of the God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, when I was a little boy many, many moons ago, there was a rhyme that I would say in the evening when it began to get dark. As soon as it was dark enough for me to see the very first star in the sky, I would say, starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. Amen. And after I said that, I would make my wish. You know, folks, when we wish upon a star, we have no reason to expect our wishes to come true. That is, unless we wish upon the star of our Blessed Mother. One of her greatest titles is that of, uh, is that of the Star of the Sea. Now, if you could make one wish this afternoon, if you could ask Mary to grant one, one wish, what would it be? I can tell you what I would wish for. I would wish for peace of mind and heart because another one of Mary's wonderful titles is Queen of Peace. You know, we wish for peace of mind and heart, but there are many obstacles to attaining that peace. A woman went to visit her neighbor who had a very ferocious looking dog. And as she approached the door, the dog began to bark wildly. And her neighbor said to her, oh, come on, Alice. Don't be afraid of my dog. You know the old proverb, a barking dog never bites. And Alice said, yes, I know the proverb, and you know the proverb, but does the dog know the proverb? Okay. We may not be afraid of a barking dog, but we're afraid of many other things. We're afraid of losing our job. We're afraid that a loved one might get in trouble. We're afraid of getting into an automobile accident. We are afraid that we or a loved one will contract the coronavirus. We're terribly afraid that a loved one might die. And the list of all our fears goes on and on. And all these fears and worries are obstacles to our peace of mind and heart. And now I have a confession to make. I am a worry wart. A few years ago, I made a routine visit to the dentist for a simple cleaning. And after the, the dental hygienist finished, she gave me what I would call a serious look. And she said, Father, do you know you have a dark spot under your tongue? And immediately I began to worry. I mean, I was afraid. 
And I said, I hope it's not cancer. And she said, it's probably not. Well, I didn't find that very reassuring. She called the doctor in, he took a look, gave it a glance and said, Father, I wouldn't worry about that. And I felt like saying, look, doc, if you had a black spot under your tongue, I wouldn't worry about it either. <laughs> well, I got back to my car, and the first thing I did was to touch the crucifix on the rosary that I always have hanging from my rear view when mirror. And I could feel the presence of Jesus and our Blessed Mother. I could almost hear them saying, hey, Charlie, what are you worried about? Haven't we taken care of you up till now? We will continue to do so. You know, my friends, that is the only way to control our fears and worries, turning to Jesus and our Blessed Mother in our prayers and placing our full trust in them. And when we pray to Jesus and our Blessed Mother, we can pray to them with confidence. Some years ago when I was a patient in a hospital, the nurse in charge asked me if I wouldn't mind having a student nurse insert the IV. Now I agreed only after the student assured me that this was not her first time. Well, thank God she got the needle properly inserted. And then she smiled and said out loud, boy, boy, this is a first. And I said, hey, I thought you've said you've done this before. She said, yes, but this is the first time I was successful. <laughs> you know, my friends, when we turn to Jesus, when we let Jesus and our Blessed Mother help us in certain situations, it is not the first time that they have done so for someone in the same situations. Down through the ages, they have helped a countless number of people with the same problems as ours. They know what they are doing. We have to believe this, truly believe this, if we are going to experience any peace of mind and heart. And as we continue our Mass, I leave you with this thought. In an episode of the comic strip Peanuts, Charles, Charlie Brown seems to be feeling down, very worried and upset. And Lucy says to him, look at it this way, Charlie Brown. These are your difficult days. These are the days of your hardship and struggle. But if you just hold your head up high and keep on fighting, you'll triumph. And Charlie says, gee, do you really think so, Lucy? And as she walks away, Lucy replies, frankly, no. You know, my friends, we all have days when we're feeling down, when we're worried and upset, when things are going badly for us. And you know, Lucy is right. We should hold our head up high, or rather we should raise our head to heaven and place ourselves in the hands of Jesus and Our Lady of Peace. We have to place our full trust in them. Maybe that's the real secret of achieving peace of mind and heart.
My sisters and brothers, pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. As we venerate the passion of your dear martyrs, grant that through this sacrifice, O Lord, we may proclaim worthily the death of your only begotten Son, who, not content with encouraging the martyrs by word, Strengthen them likewise by example, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyrs, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness to Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full, full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you, my Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me, my Jesus' mercy. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Only we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and grant, and grant her and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy and people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my, my roof, but only say the word, word, my soul shall be healed. make that single file procession down the middle aisle, keeping the six feet distance between you and stopping at the head of the aisle for the person to receive before you, keeping your mask up over your nose until you receive Holy Communion and step off to the right or the left to lift your mask and receive.
Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by the example of your blessed martyrs, we may bear in our hearts the marks of your Son's charity and suffering, and ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you for joining us today in praying the Miraculous Medal Novena. The story of the Miraculous Medal is one that we, the Vincentian fathers and brothers, want to tell over and over again, because it's a story of Mary inviting us, inviting us to place in her hands our needs, our intentions. She says very simply, come to the altar. And you can do that by either visiting us here at the shrine or giving us your intentions at miraculousmedal.org, and we'll place them in Mary's hands. Stay tuned to learn more about the Vincentian fathers and brothers and our following St. Vincent of Paul as he follows Jesus Christ, the evangelizer of the poor. And in closing, I ask Almighty God to bless you and all of your loved ones. To the intercession of St. Vincent of Paul and St. Catherine Labre, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe as Christians that God has a plan for us. It's a plan that's, that needs our cooperation. It's a plan for our happiness, for our growth. For Vincentians, the, the call of Christ is, as Vincent de Paul said, to find the poor in Christ and to find Christ in the poor. What does that mean? It means that I don't have all the answers. And how I find God is in the poor. If I look at the poor, I, I look into their face, in some way, I see the face of God. I think the heart of God is mission. And the mission is to save God's beloved children. Can a mother or father ever be truly happy if all his or her children are not with them? So I, I think that's the, the key to St. Vincent. Who is St. Vincent de Paul? He's a man of well-founded action. For me, Vincent was an ordinary person who God somehow allowed to come in contact with those who are on the margins, those who are poor. It was the way that God worked through them. And because his heart was open, he allowed that to, to grab hold of him. From that point on, he became a man of great energy, a man of great organization. He established a group of men that gathered around him, a very small group that eventually grew and grew and grew and then found a way to establish the Ladies of Charity, eventually the Doors of Charity, and then his own uh, confreres, or brothers, to serve the poor as well, both spiritually and materially. And so 400 years later, that's what we're still doing. You know, we work in universities, we have parishes, we give missions, we are missionaries, missions in China, in Panama, priests, sisters, brothers. Our Vincentian charism is an invitation to come and follow Christ and the poor. Yo, Eric Sanchez. I, Thomas King, declare my intention of faithfully dedicating myself in the congregation of the mission for the whole time of my life to the evangelization of the poor after the example of Christ evangelizing. Therefore, I propose to observe, with the help of God's grace, chastity, poverty, and obedience, according to the constitutions and statutes of this institute. I tell you, there's no greater joy than to help people come closer to the Lord.